Everyone, welcome to Link Frequency, and I'm Ashwarya Patta. This video is part of our new series, which mainly focuses on Autosar interview questions. Each part includes three Autosar questions along with the answer, which significantly enhances your preparations for the upcoming interviews. So, without any further delay, let's begin with part three of Autosar interview questions. Well, we are back to a screen where you can see Autosar interview question part three along with the three questions represented on the screen. Let us quickly jump into our first question, which basically states that what is CAN protocol? Let us see how we can answer to this particular question. CAN stands for Controller Area Network Protocol. The CAN protocol is a communication standard used primarily in the automotive and industrial applications. This is to allow various electronic devices to communicate with each other. It was originally developed by Robert Bosch in 1980s for in-vehicle networking. But then, it has been adapted in various other industries due to its reliability, real-time capabilities and robustness. It is a serial communication protocol that efficiently supports distributed real-time control with a very high level of data integrity. The CAN protocol is standardized by organizations such as ISO, which is basically International Organization for Standardization, and SAE, which is basically Society of Automotive Engineers. This standardization promotes widespread adoption and compatibility across various industries and applications. Let's quickly see into some of the key features of CAN protocol. The first one is based on multi-master communication. Multiple devices such as sensors, actuators and controllers can transmit and receive messages on the same CAN bus simultaneously. This allows for efficient communication between different components in the system. The second key feature is based on message prioritization. Messages on the CAN bus are assigned priority levels based on their identifiers. Higher priority messages have precedence over lower priority ones, thus ensuring critical messages are transmitted without any further delay. In CAN, lower the message ID, higher is the priority. Hence, critical messages are assigned lower CAN ID numbers. Moving on to our next key feature, which is based on error detection and handling. CAN includes inbuilt mechanisms for error detection and handling such as checksum and acknowledgement mechanisms. This helps ensure data integrity and reliability even in noisy environment. Moving on to our next key feature which is based on robustness in harsh environments. CAN is known for its robustness in harsh environments. It can withstand electromagnetic interferences, noise and other environmental factors commonly encountered in automotive and industrial applications. Moving on to our next key feature which is based on built-in collision resolution. CAN employs a collision resolution mechanism based on bitwise arbitration. This ensures that messages with higher priority IDs are transmitted first while the lower priority messages wait for an opportunity to send. Moving on to our last key feature which is based on efficiency and scalability. CAN is designed to be efficient and scalable. It can accommodate a large number of nodes on the bus without significant overhead, thus making it suitable for a wide range of application. So, these were the few key features of CAN protocol. Let us quickly jump into our second question which is based on what logic does the CAN protocol work on? The CAN protocol operates on principle of wired and logic for message arbitration, thus ensuring deterministic access to the bus and reliable communication between the nodes in multi-master environment. In the CAN bus, a logical zero is represented by a dominant state, whereas logical one is represented by a recessive state. State. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Imagine a scenario where two nodes, that is node A and node B, simultaneously attempt to transmit message on the CAN bus. Node A transmits a message with a dominant bit 0 on the bus, while node B transmits a different message with a recessive bit 1. Due to the wired AND logic, the dominant bit from the node A overrides the recessive bit from the node B. Thus, node A message is transmitted successfully, while on the other hand, node B detects the dominant bit on the bus and aborts the transmission. It further continues waiting for the bus to become ideal before retrying. So for this question, this example along with the explanation is sufficient. Now let us quickly move on to our third question which indicates why CAN protocol has 120 ohms resistor at the each end. 
You can mention the following reasons to answer this question. The first one is match impedance. Ensure the impedance of CAN bus matches the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. The second point is minimize reflections. Prevent signal reflections at the end of the bus which can distort communication. The last point is based on prevent interference which basically means minimize signal noise thus enhancing the robustness of the communication system. So for this question you will have to basically tell about how to reduce the noise and how the reflection is reduced. So this was all about the three questions along with their answers related to CAN in our today's video. For detailed explanation and understanding of the CAN protocol, you can check out our playlist on Autosa. Well, this was part 3 video of Autosa interview question series. I hope you found the video insightful. For any queries, you can surely comment down in the comment section below. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.